Live coverage of the PBA Players Championship rolls on at AMF Bolero Lanes in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Mike J. Laneside with Phil Schott, Brilo, and Internet Bowling personality Jeff Goodger. Gentlemen, we have a roll-off for 24th position in the PBA Players Championship, and it's a good one. Mike Fagan, Eugene McCune, not the best blocks for either one of them. Fagan dropped a few spots during the course of the last couple of the games. Eugene held steady. They find themselves tied at plus 328. And pretty interesting watching during the 10-minute warm-up period here with Mike Fagan alternating between his plastic spare ball on the outside to create a shot for himself and moving inside with a ball that looks like it's been hit with something you'd resurface a wood floor with to tear up the inside where Eugene McKean was playing. So to respond to that, Eugene threw a couple of shots inside, didn't mind his reaction, but then moved in between where Eugene, or in between where Mike Fagan was throwing his stuff. And Eugene was throwing messengers and uh, carrying strikes, blowing out seven pins. So uh, something tells me in the range of 240, we'll win this match at the rate these two are playing. John Weber turns him loose, and uh, Eugene McCune decides that Mike Fagan will begin left lane. And as Fagan removes the piece of charcoal from the ball rack. Let's see. He had a good look with that spare ball in practice. I think he may see if he stays with it or if he goes with a medium resin piece here. We couldn't have a better seat for this, Phil, as we are directly behind the player, so we'll be a little more low-key than we normally are. And uh, you have the best seat at home. Live extra frame coverage. The battle for 24th and final position. Mike Fagan versus Eugene McCune. Opening shot. One game will determine who makes match play and continues bowling at 2.30 Eastern in our first round. And Mike Fagan going with his Geico spare ball. So you'll be seeing him playing up right around third and fourth board, very direct up the outside of the lane. And you'll see that ball pick up about 42, 43 feet. Splits the eight and nine for Fagan. So uh, interesting battle chess match with equipment and Eugene makes him start over there, and Mike puts a strike on the board. Early pressure, but I don't think Eugene is phased by it at all. We've seen him in tough situations before. He's just going to play his own game out there. The rocket lets it fly, and he gets a strike, strike a piece, roll off for the 24th and final spot in match play. Jason Belmonte led this field 247.7 average. DJ Archer second, Tom Smallwood third, Ronnie Russell fourth, Norm Duke fifth position, Ronnie, uh, Rhino Page is sixth, Dave Watka seventh, Chris Barnes, Walter Ray Williams Jr., Tom Doherty are the top ten. This is for the 24th spot. They are tied at plus 328. And Eugene kind of building off of what Mike Fagan may have built with that plastic spare ball. Fagan gave himself a nice shot and reaction with it, but now Eugene jumping out there as well. Possibly trying to take some of that oil away and mess with Fagan's reaction as the match goes on. Currently, the fifth uh, position is Norm Duke at plus 481. So 160 pins deep is the 24th position. However, with three rounds of round robin match play coming in bonus pins, uh, anyone can make the top five. Yeah, someone in the bottom making a nice. 8-0 or 7-1 round this afternoon could be the tonic they need to jump up in the standings. And just looked like Mike got a little tentative at release with that shot, which you find hard to believe with the power he generates so easily. Big four for Fagan here, second frame. One game roll off, Mike Fagan. Eugene McCune, winner advances to match play, gets underway here next live on extra frame round one at 2.30 Eastern time. Oh. 
open frame for Fagan. AMF Bolero Lanes in Wauwatosa, site of the qualifying rounds for the PBA Players Championship and the Mark Roth Marshall Holman doubles competition. Neither player will factor in the doubles part of our competition. Walter A. Williams and Tom Smallwood pacing. Jason Belmonte, Bill O'Neill second. Norm Duke, West Malott third. Patrick Allen and Jake Peters making it in on the number at plus 610. Now Fagan after the open frame back on that left lane with the plastic ball. And a strike. We've seen plenty of plastic and urethane here at Bolero. Yeah, quite a few lefties were using urethane this week. I noticed uh, Patrick Allen was one of them, Brett Spangler another, uh, that went very straight and direct off the left side using urethane. Of course, Walter Ray Williams yesterday shooting a 300 game with his friends with target zone. Eugene can jump out to a quick lead here. Just a pinch high, four pin. With a spare, he'll lead by 23 early. It's a one-game roll-off. PBA Players Championship, Mike J with Phil Schott. Your new nickname, I like it. There you go. Action continuing here live at Extra Frame, 2.30 Eastern, round one of match play. And who will join the top 23? Will it be Eugene McCune or Mike Fagan? And not only that, but I believe this is the last paycheck for the Players' Championship as well. I believe the top 24 are the ones receiving checks this week. Eugene cleans up the spare. Each player trying to groom the playing field in their 10 minutes of warm-up. Oh, no, one and three pay out, so they'll pay out further than 24th place or 85 entries. So they're just looking to get themselves a bigger check as the week goes on. That ball hooked at Eugene's feet. He pulled that one left. And where Mike Fagan was playing in practice with that heavily sanded bowling ball, hit that. And uh, Eugene with the big break, thanks to Mike Fagan. So huge for the paycheck as well. In addition, the player advancing to match play will have an opportunity to win this title. A couple of folks uh, just missing out. Uh, Kurt Pilon was just heartbroken following the round. Kurt uh, missed the cut by seven pins. Joe Paluzic just missing out five pins away. Devin Bidwell, six pins out. Fagan avoids a 7-10 there. Yeah, watching Kurt Pilon Missed the pocket just once that last game. And two eight pins, a nine pin, and a couple of tens. And unfortunately backed his way out of the top 24. Fagan covers the 10. And he trails by 23 pins, no strike multiplier working. It's going to be interesting because he has two plastic spare balls on the rack, Fagan does. He has his Geico spare ball from the PBA League competition along with his normal Storm spare ball. The balls that have the custom graphics on them tend to hook a little bit more than the average plastic ball. They're a little softer on the surface. And that's why we see Fagan going with that Geico spare ball as compared to just this regular strike ball. Of course, drillings could have a little to do with that, but with the pancake weight blocks, and it's got a tape issue. Always the drama of the roll-off. You go from a completely filled bowling center with action to the absolute dead silence of a one-on-one -on -one match. It's always so striking. And first time I've had this with extra frame, trying to control my own voice volume as close as we are to the bowlers. We are literally less than 10 feet away from the bowlers while they're on the back of the approach. And you, know, you don't want to do anything that disturbs them when they have this important of a match going on.
and high. The PBA World Champion comes up high, kicks out the split. Seemed a little farther left than where he was in practice with that plastic ball right now. And it could be that Eugene's taken away enough oil countering the chess moves that Mike Fagan will have to make another jump to get himself back in the pocket. I always like Eugene's pace of play. There's no waiting around for him. It's get up and get the job done. Ready, bowl. And the ball gets as quickly to the pocket as Eugene gets on the approach. Yeah, one of the fun things to see was with Eugene was the first time I was with Extra Frame with you and Jeff in Dubuque, and we watched at Cherry Lanes. We watched Eugene get inside between fifth and sixth arrow and slow float the ball out to the gutter coming back in and having a great run through match play in that tournament. Ooh, high flush hit and nine pin, solid for Eugene. We've seen the back row assert itself here at AMF Bolero. Yes, we have. Um, lots of nines as the ball grabs through that friction, even though there's only technically 14 feet of dry at the end of the pattern, but the way the pattern transitions, the balls start rolling up five or six feet earlier. They have no problem getting the entry angle through the pocket. Light hits. We've had some Bolero sevens, as we've called them, where the, you know everything kind of gets around the seven pin and nothing knocks it over. And everybody's pesky nemesis, the ten pin. And not a lot of messengers, or as I like to call them now, Sandman, seen throughout the week. Fagan takes a little wider path that time. And that's a strike on the right lane. Big four back in the second. Plenty of room left on the scorecard for Fagan. He can still shoot 234. Yeah, even though it's obviously not even close to a league pattern, it's pretty easy here at Bolero to get the ball to come back off the outside few boards. There's not too many pairs where the topography makes that ball hang on first or second board. Big shot for Fagan, looking for a double here to cut into the lead and a 10 pin. Got it where he wanted to, but that ball just not facing up quick enough. It's still amazing that with 46 feet of oil out there, players can bring in plastic off the gutter and make it hit. Just not hard enough in that case for Mike Fagan. On the 46-foot Mark Roth pattern here at the PBA Players' Championship, battle for 24th and final position to advance to match play. Round one gets underway next here at 2.30 Eastern. Now Eugene McCune working on the spare and a lead here in the seventh. Yeah, up by 34 at this point. <laughs> 7-10 standing, 7-10 falling. Oh, that was like a just a knife cutting across the deck right there. One little pinwheel and just slicing the 10 pin and right down. Get his lead out to 44 pins. That was just left out of his hand. He knew it. Sets up Fagan, and I got to believe he's got to have the next two to have any chance at this roll-off. Yeah, Fagan's max right now is 214, and Eugene working at 218 pace. Yeah, eight and nine here are a must for Mike Fagan.
That's the finicky nature of that shot. You get it right too fast, and that's what happens. We saw that with Dick Allen at the South Point Bowling Plaza. He was playing a similar line on the Cheetah. And you get a little right early, you get a little slow on the speed, and that ball just grabs the lane and just put a turn signal on it. It's going left that quick. Yes. Interesting that all those fields, 240 player fields at the World Series of Bowling, four rounds of animal patterns, and the World Championship standings, no ties. Next event, we have 85 of the best bowlers in the world, and we got a tie, we got a roll off. Well, that's, the way of, the, yeah. that's the way the ball bounces. <laughs> and we can't deflate the balls out here. No. It could be interesting if... But you can sand them. Yes. And or shine them. Yeah. Or polish them. And whether that decision is coming back to bite Mike Fagan right now. It's interesting. It looks like he's making a ball change. Well, that's the interesting thing about Fagan. I talked to him about it at World Championship, and he's one of the players that comes in with a game plan. But the ability to work off that game plan, call an audible, if you will, based on what he sees in front of him. So now a big move here from Fagan. Yeah, he's going to end up sliding in the left gutter and definitely going to be needing to pick up his ball speed from his slows. He was throwing that plastic. And that hook spot he created just bit him again. There's a couple of those shots in practice. That ball was picking up at about 30 feet. The, the sanded ball he was using was picking up and moving left at about 30 feet, which shows you how low the volume of oil at the end of this Mark Roth pattern is the last 15, 16 feet. Eugene doesn't even need a mark here. Count, count will get him home. Best Fagan can do is 190. So Eugene McCune will take the roll off in advance. Phil, and we'll uh, preview our match play coming up live on Extra Frame Round 1 at 2.30 Eastern. Um, can anything stop the two-time PBA Player of the Year? Jason Bomani leads this field. A couple of bad breaks and matches and losing 30 pins to some opponents is really about it so far. I mean, another block averaging over 250 for his four games this morning. You know, the surprise that could make his way up in the TV field, Parker Bone the third. Had a huge block this morning, shot over 1,000 for his four games. Crawled his way into the top 24. When we saw him on extra frame yesterday, he had air for ball reaction. And, you know, he, a lot of talking with, with Chuck Gardner and with his doubles partner, Ryan Simonelli, and he found something this morning. And you know it's something for him to build off of. It's a great top 24. You'll want to join us starting at 2.30. DJ Archer impressed at the World Series of Bowling, earning his first national title. He's second. Tom Smallwood is a world champion. Ronnie Russell among the... Arguably the hottest players in the world right now. Norm Duke is fifth. Rhino Page returning the form from the left side. Dave Watka is seventh. Chris Barnes and Walter Ray Williams Jr. always count on them to contend. Tom Doherty is tenth. Connor Pickford is eleventh. Also impressed at the World Series of Bowling. Coming up just shy in his bid for his first title. Dan McClelland, one of those handful of players that doesn't have a national title but uh, should by now you would think. Anthony Lacaz is a title holder. Dick Allen in the mix. John Van Hees, talented younger player. Dom Barrett, another PBA world champion. Brian Himmler, the chief. Making a nice run on his way back to the tour here. Brian Valenta, another two-hander. Wes Malott, runner-up in the world championship. Patrick Girard continues to bowl well. Scott Norton and Parker Bone from the left side, joined by Michael Hogan Jr. and Eugene McCune. So that's a 24 in match play, three rounds. Get started at 2.30 Eastern. Yeah, and two bowlers that didn't have doubles partners this week, Patrick Girard and Connor Pickford, were actually on the same pair during qualifying. Boy, if those two would have been doubles partners, imagine what they, damage they could have done to that doubles field. So that'll wrap up our roll-off. Eugene McCune advances into the match play field at the PBA Players Championship. For Jeff Goodger and Phil Brilo, this is Mike G. Laneside inviting you to return to AMF Bolero at 2.30 Eastern time for the first round of match play in the PBA Players Championship. Only live on Extra Frame. So long from Wauwatosa.